So I'm here with the girls from RBST and they've been representing this organisation for the whole weekend. So tell us a little bit about what your role is at RBST and what it is that you do for the organisation. So we're both members of the Rare Breed Survival Trust, um, members and volunteers. So um, the sheep inside are, are ours. They're not, um, they're not the charities, but okay. they're ours. But we work within the charity to help promote the rare breeds. Okay. Um, and um, we're doing a, yeah, a lot of work to promote the rare breeds yeah. and, and the fact that we need to keep them going. Yeah. So Millie is also classed as a young handler because she's actually under the age of 21. So Millie, tell us about what that course entails, what you've got coming up, and just what you've learned during that time of being a young handler. So when you're a young handler, you have to like learn how to handle the sheep. You have to um, tell the people what the judge would look for and how to like look after the breed of that sheep, especially the okay. breed, the primitive breeds, and what. Um, and all sorts of wow! So you're actually competing in a competition this year. When yeah. is that? That's in November. In November. Yeah. Perfect. So are you excited? Are you nervous? Yeah. Um, bit of both. <laughs> bit of both. That's yeah. good. That's good. Yeah. I'm sure you'll do great. Yeah. So if anyone out there is looking to kind of sponsor yeah. you, you're open to kind of working with different brands or different companies that might want to help you in your journey. Is that right? Yeah. yeah? Perfect. Yeah. So have you found that people have been so intrigued to come over to you? Yeah. I bet you have, because it's so exciting as well. And I think it's a little bit different for the show. Um, so have they been good? Have they been naughty? Yeah, mostly been fine. Mostly been fine? We've had a few children who want to take them home. Oh really? That's yeah. good though. You know? yeah, yeah. It, it kind of raises awareness of the different yeah. breeds as well, yeah. doesn't it? it yeah. It's really good because a lot of people think that our breed of sheep are actually goats. Really? I think because they look so different yeah. to the sheep that you used to see yeah. in the field. Yeah. So it's really nice to be able to explain to people have that conversation that yeah. they're a sheep, they're primitive, yeah. which means that um, all the sheep mm -hmm. that you see now have evolved from mm -hmm. our particular breed of sheep. Mm -hmm. And it's really good to, to sort of yeah. show people that yeah. the sheep aren't just the big white yeah, fluffy yeah. things that you see. Well, it's in the true. Field. Yeah, because they do come in all shapes and sizes, I guess. Yeah. So is your whole participation at the event about raising awareness, kind of getting some more volunteers maybe? Is that what you're after here today? Yeah, mainly raising awareness of yeah. um, the rare breeds and, yeah. and how you know critical some of them are and yeah. Yeah. that every little bit helps to mm -hmm. preserving them. And mm -hmm. also, obviously, people interested in, in the Rare Breed Survival Trust yeah. Yeah. themselves, they can be, become members, they can okay. become um, volunteers. You don't yeah. have to have animals yeah. yourself you okay. can volunteer yeah. as a non-animal owner yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's yeah it's just a really good way of so who have we got it. behind us here that's Winnie and Willow Winnie and Willow yeah. they're yeah. so cute I love that they're Borays Borays so they're different to the breed of sheep that we've brought we've okay. brought North Ronaldsay which are okay. also a rare breed yeah. Yeah. Um, there's also a couple of baggot goats in there yeah. so okay. uh, a bit of variety and you've been taking them out as well haven't you and <laughs> yeah. saying hello to people and that must be getting a lot of attention yeah yeah it does because all you know as well like all the the gardens here it's really nice to kind of take take them around and just kind of get pictures with everyone because they are show staffers so yeah, yeah. They're, they're used to being with people they're yeah. used to being on, in a showground atmosphere because we take them to shows and we yeah. compete yeah so we knew that we were quite safe to take them around yeah. and you know we've just been making the most of it and, uh, and have you had a good weekend yeah really yeah good, really the weather's good. been great so definitely better will we see now. you next season next year sorry yeah all being Same well weekend next year yeah yeah, yeah all being well we'll be back So I am here with the volunteers from Friends of Rotten Row. We've got Carol and Mary, and they're here because they have been building a garden. So Mary, do you think you're going to be able to get all the volunteers to kind of join you guys and kind of just spread the awareness of what you guys do at Friends of Rotten Row? Do you think people will get involved from this? Well, we, we do this indoor display with, yeah. with pictures and uh, information about us and quite a few of our volunteers have come through that system okay, okay. and in fact today we have some new people who've just moved to the area, um, um, a lady and her partner and they're going to join us. Mm -hmm. Um, they live within walking distance of the row and they yeah. loved it and they're coming to join us. Perfect. So we just, that's how we recruit because 
some of our people get older and leave and various things so um, we just keep it going keep it every going, year. Yeah. yeah, perfect. So guys, how, where do you get your funding from? Where do you get the donations kind of funded? We, we don't have any funding as such, we rely solely on donations okay. and sponsors and every so often somebody will say okay we'll give you an amount of money to yeah. do a certain thing with yeah. if you will. But, but we have to literally apply all the time or put the word out there mm -hmm. I mean, we have a facebook page as well which again we try to raise awareness mm -hmm. but we're, it is all we are solely reliant on donations so if people wanted to help and donate where do they go and how do they kind of do that and get in contact well they can actually look on our facebook page yeah. they will see um, the details there, yeah. also where we are situated, where New Directions is on Rotten Road, we actually share the complex there, okay. so half, half of that it, it is our yeah. part, yeah. so they can always sort of call in there on a Monday or a Thursday. Okay, perfect. Well, thank you so much ladies, I hope you had a great weekend. Oh, yes. Yes. And we'll see you next year. <laughs> yes. 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 Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. So we are here with Kathy from Born Beat, let's start again, three, two, we are here with Kathy and she is from Formby Flower Club and we are so excited because she's actually got with us here her second prize, second place prize. Kathy, take us through this. This is incredible. I've never seen something so intricate and I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued by this. The class was called Dress to Impress and had to design the club. I've made this club from local art which is a natural plant material. The, it was quite difficult to make. I just had to form the fingers all individually, then stitch them together. Wow. That is, this is beautiful. That is fern, uh, which is commercially available. It has been preserved no, no, no. and painted wow. white. So I added that to look like a little curl on the glove. And here we have some leaves from the Sebastian Termentosum, also known as snow in summer. Those are pepper berries, pink pepper berries, and that is actually some hydrangea flowers, dried wow. hydrangea flowers, and they've just been glued on. So how did you get the 3D effect? Because obviously I know you've got something inside keeping it together, but did you base this off your own hands? Yes. Yeah? Which was my big mistake. <laughs> I'm right-handed, so I made it on my left hand. Yeah. I have small hands and hadn't realised that mulberry bark actually does shrink oh. once it's been wet. <laughs> if only I'd made it over somebody else's hand, I would have had two hands to make it with, it would have been a lot easier and it would have yes. been bigger. Apparently the judges loved it, but it was just too small for the space. It was, it's beautiful. But I really enjoyed making it and that's the beauty of flowers, it's not just flower arranging. There's so many things that you can make using plant material and you're always looking for something new and finding something else to do. Yeah. Have you enjoyed your experience here at Southport Flower Show? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I've been coming to Southport Flower Show since I was this high. A baby baby. Since I, absolutely. Yeah. As my dad used to grow late flowering for Sants, so we always used to come to the show. This is in your blood. So is it flowers? Yes. yes. Flowers are in my blood. Yes. And I've always loved the Southport Flower Show. And so I've got one question for yes. you. What's your favourite flower? Oh, my favourite flower changes every day. But if I'd have a, I have one think, for the rest of the life, sweet peas. Sweet peas, beautiful. Yes, because with sweet peas, you can pick them every day of the summer. Yes. You can go to your garden, and every day you can pick a bunch of sweet peas. Yes. And the smell is delightful. It and there's is. nothing more joyful to have in the house. Thank you so much, Kathy, for joining us, and I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Right, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. So I'm here with Ralph from St James's Place, and these guys do all things wealth management. So Ralph, have you had a good weekend this weekend? Oh, it's been really good. Yeah, yeah. We've had, uh, lots of people passing by, yeah. coming, saying hello. Yeah. You know. So what are the comments? What have, have people been enjoying themselves? Have they been friendly? Have they been approaching you? Well, of course. Yeah, you know, they, they, I think. I approach them. Yes, you do. Well, that's part <laughs> of the job, right? Yeah, that's part of the job. But yeah. I think, yeah, they, they, they come back. Yeah. You know, they, come, yeah. they, they come for a chat. They come yeah. for they, there's reasons why they come, yeah. you know, because of what we offer. Yeah. Uh, so tell me a little bit about that. Like, what is it that you guys do at St. James Place? Uh, we, you know, we, we kind of lead with 
holistic financial planning so it's not just one solution yeah uh, so it's it's uh, understanding the client uh -huh. uh, but what we offer is face-to-face uh, -face advice mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so it's not buying up a website yes. it's more bespoke yes. wealth management and often those conversations actually need to be something that you have in person with someone because people can be a little bit unsure about how to have those conversations or even what they need to know about so I probably that's what's really good for you to do this weekend yeah of course it is you know I think one of the one of the ways that we help our clients mm -hmm. mostly mm -hmm. is uh, tax efficiency. Okay. So if we can uh, give them an idea about the tax allowances or yeah. reliefs that's available yeah. to them, that's how they can benefit. So it's not just about investment service; it's about the whole package and uh, what, what's important. So do you work with all ages as well? from like people who are maybe just buying their first home to people who are looking for a pension and things like that? Yeah, all the way through. You yeah, know, we even do later good. life planning, so you know, the, the, for the whole spectrum. So whether yeah. you want a, a junior ISA, yeah. uh, you know, when your child is born or, or you know, whether later life planning if you're 90 years old and you know, what's next when yeah. you're going to care homes yeah. or residential. Yeah. We don't think about that stuff, do we really? No, no. So how important would you say it is for people to kind of get a bit more information about this kind of stuff because I think sometimes we put it off a little bit and I think we don't really get taught this in schools really do we when we grow up so do you think it's important for something that people invest in you think? I, I think it, yeah well I, I think have a conversation with you with your financial advisor for sure you yeah. know we're, we're, we're not big we're not bad we're not all trying yeah. to sell you something yeah, yeah. Uh, you know it's about adding benefits along the way yeah. uh, so absolutely reach out to, yeah. to, to us if you're, if you're local you know if you're in yeah the Formby area, yeah, Southport yeah, yeah. area, um, but you know, just just there's, there's the world beyond Google. Uh, so yeah, yeah. when when you know Google's not always right. It doesn't always give the right answers, does no. it? No. So yeah. you know, so you, you know, yeah. Certainly, have a check around your have area. There'll be financial yeah. advisors who can help you yeah. make the right decisions. And so if people wanted to reach out to you, and how do they contact you? Your website or your email address? Uh, yeah. So, absolutely. Yeah, our um, website is Cobain and As Associates. Okay. Yeah, we'll pop that down in the okay, description. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we're based in Formby. Yeah. Perfect. So. Okay. And they can give you a call as well, right? They yeah. can give us a call. Perfect. Yeah. So yeah, guys, make sure you give them a call and speak to Ralph because he'll be able to help you out. And I'm sure if you've been to the Southport Flower Show and you've seen them, then make sure you give them a heads up. And I'm sure they'll be able to help you guys. Thank you so much, Ralph. And Thank you very much. Have a yes. weekend. And you. Thank you. So we're here in the food tent with Bill from Bruda and he has got me on the scotch. I'm not normally a big fan of scotch, but tell me a little bit about your brand and what it is that you guys do. Okay, so starting with Bruda, what's the, the, the big sign behind us yes. is a liqueur and that's whiskey with honey. Ooh. And it's absolutely brilliant. It's, it's nice and sweet and it, yeah. it appeals to lots and lots of different people uh -huh. because it's got a lovely sweet it's not too strong. Yes. It's only 24%. Okay. What we're having holding now is what we call a blended malt okay. of three space side single malts right, okay. that we've chosen to marry together. Mm -hmm. Very mellow. Should we give it a treat? I think we should give it a wee. Oh. Slange. Slange. Sla what, what do I say? Slange. Slange. Correct. Cheers. I mean, it takes a little bit of convincing to me, but as a newbie, how would I drink this? So I would drink this probably with a tiny touch of water okay. and just let the water interact with the whiskey so yeah. it kind of lets all the, the, the flavours and esters of the whiskey come to the surface, relaxes the whiskey and it's not, not as fiery okay. on the palate. Okay, so maybe I'll have to take a bottle home and try this. But you're all the way from Perth, is that right? Yeah, that's right, we're based, yeah. yeah. And you're quite a regular at the show. Yeah. Yeah, how many years have you been here? I've been this personally done this for the last 12 years. Wow. I mean, that just goes to show what a great show it is. It's just a great Has show. Has the weather's been on your side this weekend as well? The weather's been okay. We get lots of lots of regular customers yes. coming, yeah. and it's great to see such a, a busy show. Yeah, perfect. And you're in the food tent here, so you're yeah. amongst all the kind of like um, independents and also like different brands of, with different kinds of food. We've got cheeses, we've got all sorts of drinks. So yeah, we're going to be making our way down the tent, but lovely to speak to you. And you too. Nice and to meet you. Have a lovely weekend. Thank you very much. All the best. Thank you. Okay, go. So I'm here with Steph, better known as the knife sharpener guy, and I'm sure you guys have seen his face somewhere or other. But I'm here with him because I want to know a little bit more about what this is. So, if for, obviously I don't know, people out there might do. But take me through about what this product does and what it's all about. Well, I'd like to introduce you to the world's best knife sharpener. 
Yeah. It sticks down to your work surface. Yeah. It doesn't move. You don't have to hold it. It's going to go absolutely nowhere. Stick it down there like that. Take your knife. Any steel bladed knife. Any. So this is not going to move, is it? This not is at stay. all. This is going to stay exactly where you put it. Take your knife. Make sure that the blade is clean and dry. Start at the heel. End up at the tip. Hold it upright. Slide it back. Pull it through there like that half a dozen times. Keep the blade upright. By keeping the blade upright, you're going to get the same angle on both sides at the same time. Half a dozen times, give it a clean, give it a try. If it's not quite as sharp as you want it to be, do it all over again. This knife was very, very inexpensive from a leading supermarket. Okay. You don't need an expensive knife if all you require is an absolutely oh, razor sharp one. Any type of knife, blade, edge or steel, including your fully serrated bread knife. Okay. Now the manufacturers of these will tell you that you can't sharpen them. Yeah. And the reason they tell you that is to make them down. Oh. Put it in there. So you're going to save us money? Absolutely. That's what it's all about yeah. these days. It's yeah, not yeah, what you yeah. spend, it's what you can save. Put it in there, take the pressure off, glide it through. Very, very gently. Stroke it through there like that, nice and gently. Give it a clean. That will make that fully serrated bread knife one of the sharpest knives you've ever picked up. Now, there are three in the range that stick to your work surface. And we start with this one. This is our basic knife sharpener. The body is made from plastic. It's 15 pounds and it comes with a two year guarantee. To make it stick, you just push, hold, pull the lever. And this one will do your ordinary knives and your serrated knives. So Next, I need to replace this, this bit later? You can, yeah, I was waiting to, a bit later on to show you that. But okay. Yes, by all means, are we going okay. to that in a second. Okay. These ones are slightly different. Both of these are made from food grade stainless steel. Okay. These ones have a 10 year guarantee. It's much more robust, much more durable. This one is 25 pounds. Powder coated stainless steel, mm -hmm. 10 year guarantee. Stick it just there. You'll see why in a second. Okay. This one is 30 pounds. The reason it's 30 and not 25 because the body on this one and all of these have been electroplated, which just gives it a much harder, much more chip and scratch resistant finish. Okay. So, with these ones, they're heavy duty ones. Mm -hmm. We're at a flower show, so it's only fitting that we would have something with we'll do some of your garden tools of as well. Sickles, scythes, spades, clothes, wow. net salunas, mower blades, garden shears. In there, lean it over to the one side. Always lean it over to the left. Yeah. Pull it through there like that, flip it around. Again, lean it over to the left. And the reason we lean it to the left is because you only have a single bevel per blade. Pull it through, give it a clean. And this is just one of the reasons we call it the world's best knife shop. I'm sold, I'm sold. One last thing. Now you asked a very, very good question a few seconds ago. It's all about sustainability and value for money. These are incredible. Any of their knife sharpeners, after you've been using these for a number of years, or at any time you feel that it's just not quite sharpening, as good as it did when you first bought it, that may be 10, 12 years down the road. Stick it down, remove those two screws, and take the lid off. The two pieces of tungsten car Carbide, the bit that does the actual sharpening, these yes. are both fully replaceable. Oh, perfect. Don't chuck it away, don't go and buy a new one, you don't need to. Just pop in some spare blades, put those in there, put the lid back on, you're good to go all over again. Perfect. I've been a butcher for over 50 years. These are the best. They're quick, clean, safe, they work every single time. Okay, but why, in your opinion, is it so important to have a sharp knife? You are far more likely to injure yourself with a blunt knife than a sharp knife. With a blunt knife, all you're going to do when you try and cut stuff, the knife is going to scale over something, you're going to get your hand in the right place. A nice sharp knife, pull it through nice and gentle, and that will sharpen and it will cut. So this is going to impress the girls really, isn't Absolutely. it? You know, when, when you're trying to cook some dinner at home for a potential... Is that the sharp knife? Absolutely. Absolutely. This is what impresses the girls. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So I'm here with Kerry from ZK Limited and we are here with him and he is going to take us through all of the amazing food that he has. So, Kerry, what is your best selling product today? Uh, all products, I'd say. All of his products, all of his products. Yeah.
and uh, everything very nice and different olives like uh, stuffed garlic, uh, stuffed lemon, chili, pimento, uh, different people liking different olives. All these products come from Greek. All super fresh. All fresh. Yeah. Still in make it fresh, still in fresh. So what is your favorite out of everything? What would you My favorite, your favorite? The best in the olives. Yeah, which one? Which one? Uh, stuffed cheese. Stuffed cheese, there you go. From the man himself, if you're going to come down to Southport Flower Show tomorrow, Turkish make sure delight. you grab one of these. Turkish delight. Turkish Flowers, delight. Honey cashew, different Turkish delight, like rose, orange, mango, apple, banana, lemon. I mean, it smells amazing. Like, if, if this was smell -o vision I could promise you, you would want to buy it. Everything it smells so good. So thank you so much. Thank you very much. Have a lovely weekend. So you also. Thank you. So I'm here with Gooch from Punjabin and he has been absolutely ransacked today. All of his products have gone. So it still smells good though. So <laughs> you tell me what has been your most popular product this weekend? Um probably our veg samosa. Yeah? Yeah. So we Classic, king of samosas, yeah. go to India, everything's veg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so these are like handmade by my mum, so I am the most biased thing to do when you get handmade. <laughs> so yeah, so then. Everything's homemade? Everything, yes, yeah, so it's all handmade. Yeah. And we've got a little unit now that we make it all from. Okay. How long does it take you to prep for an event like this? Um, so we've got a bit of a conveyor belt yeah. always on the go. So we're here, my mum's in Brighton, for example. Okay. So we're. All over the place? Yeah, so we're all, yeah. a few days. Yeah, good. Good few days of hard graft, although I'm not grafting as much as mum. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, she'll pass it on to me one day, I'm sure she will. Yeah, so Have I... Have you got all the recipes? Yeah, well, no, because I talk a lot. Okay. So <laughs> you do the sales. I do the sales. She does the mum food. doesn't make it. Okay, Division of labour. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you had a good weekend? Yeah, it's been pretty good. Yeah, yeah I mean, um, been on your side. Yeah, we've, it's been a bit windy. It's yeah. been, I think people still come out and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, having um, a. You've got one more day tomorrow. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think we've got the women's football. Yeah. Hopefully, people will watch that and then yeah, come out and see us celebrating a good win with any luck. Well, so I'm actually visiting India in September. So, really? what would you suggest is the perfect kind of street food when you're in India? Where are you going? I'm going to Delhi, Mumbai. So you got a Bani Puri, Bola okay. Guppi, which is so yeah, okay, so, they're okay. the, so they're the crisp shells and yeah. you put all the water in. Uh, samosa chaat. Okay. Um, so I'll give it a Samosa chaat. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so with all your, your top But I can imagine stuff. in India it's oh, just... Oh, it's a different, yeah, different, different gravy, level. isn't it? Yeah. Um, I remember having really nice samosas and tea on the trains. Okay. Really? Okay. But what I will say, I don't know if I can say this, but you're not going to get very far without being stopped in the street. Okay. <laughs> because yeah, because you're uh, yeah, you're gonna stand out a mile, yeah, and I'm people sure will be really nice. Yeah. No, but I've, I've heard everyone's lovely. Yeah, I went with a friend who is not Indian, yeah. and by the end we came back up two weeks. I was calling him selfie uncle. Well, I'm sure I'll be very full. Yes. And, uh, oh, the food's I'm amazing. sure everyone will feed me delicious food. The food yeah. is absolutely amazing. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Well, thank you so much. Yeah. Have a lovely weekend. Cheers, Jess. Thank you very much. Cheers. Can I get you introduce yourself, please? Tilda Roach, and I designed this garden. And how old are you? I'm 11 years old. And where are you from? Exton. And what got you to decide to design a garden like this? Um, well, I was inspired by my own back garden. I've got lavender for the bees and butterflies, and I can see they enjoy that. And um, sometimes hedgehogs and little creatures like voles and things like that visit our house. Do you like hedgehogs? Yeah. So, what's special about this garden for hedgehogs? Well, there's a house for them, so they, and I tried to make it as natural of a habitat for them as I could. Well, thank you. Well done. And you've won a gold, haven't you? Well, congratulations. Well done. And I expect to see you at the next fire show designing another big garden. Thank you very much.
Mike from Flint and Flame and we're actually now looking at some sharp knives. You don't need no knife sharpener for these. So Mike, so a lot of the time when people think of expensive knives, I think it's all in this bit here, which is I'm guessing the blade, that's yep. what we call it. But Correct. it's actually a lot more in the handle as well and the weight and how that's designed. Yeah, it's all about how tactile the knife is. Some mm -hmm. knives you'll find a top heavy or too light and people end up gripping them and then they end yes. up getting blisters or calluses. Yes. But these are perfectly designed, they're perfectly balanced, just to make your life a lot easier. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so come on, give us a go. Let's okay. have a look. You want to have a go? I mean, yeah, my dad was a chef. Okay, so I guess I should know how to do this pretty well. Right. But I do have nails on here, Mike. Okay, so don't embarrass me. Okay, well, <laughs> pick up the knife first and let's see if you hold it correctly. I feel like you should have showed me this before. Okay. We stop. haven't done this before. Stop though. straight away. Okay. Stop straight away. So, what you're doing is you're doing that, which is how you normally cut your dinner. What I want you to do is I want you to pinch it at the top. So, put your thumb at the top, that's it. So, you're not going to hurt your nail, it's not going to break a nail. <laughs> Um, but it will just give you more control over the knife. Okay, and then all you've got to do is just try and cut it and you'll find how easy it is. I mean, yeah, it's pretty sharp, isn't it? Yeah. So, I mean, you can probably do this a lot quicker than I can. Um, maybe a little bit, but I have been doing it for I four mean, years. I mean, are you, are you meant to kind of... Go yeah, your when, you, when you're chopping, when you're doing, um, and I'll show you in a second, when you're doing things like celery, but tomatoes are, are a bit smaller, but when you're doing sort of like your chopping action, mm -hmm. if you push your, your um, index finger over, mm -hmm. and then you're not going to cut yourself because you've got nowhere near the blade, so and then you can just move your finger back, and that's how you chop. I mean, it massively helps when you've got a good knife though, doesn't it? It really does help. So, if people want to buy any of your knives, where can they find you? So, we do up to 150 shows a year, all over the country. We're based in a little village called Billings which is in uh, near Horsham in West Sussex mm -hmm. but we do um, shows every weekend and we do obviously shows like the flower show but we do things like grand designs at home, home show so uh, there's a list on our website people can find where to buy it yeah. and we offer reductions on prices at all the shows. Okay. Are you online as well? We're online so people can order directly online and all our products have a 25 year guarantee perfect. so it's a long time investment. Perfect, thank you so much. No worries. Thank you. Females are Indian blue so once we have this wave of them, I think they will, they will produce white ones and Indian blue ones as well. It's a nice photograph of my friend in the, in the red dress, isn't it? The balls. Or the cob. Uh, South Portly Porter. Right? Yeah. That's going to be South Portly yeah. Porter. Perfect. All right, we need to go. Press this. Press that down. 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 Press that
Yeah, it's alright, I'll let you off, everybody else gets it wrong. Where's my stickers? You push it, just push it downwards now.